Um, hi guys, I think, I think this is recording. I hope this is recording. Um, this is uh, the first time I'm actually trying to make a video with my iPad. Uh, a few months ago, I broke down and I went and purchased an iPad. I've never had an Apple product before. My phone is an Android and I was just not into that iPhone, the whole iPhone hype or whatever. But um, uh, we're all going away to California next month to my niece's wedding and I thought, you know what? An iPad on the plane because they don't have the entertainment in the back of the um, seat like JetBlue does. We're taking um, Alaska Air and they don't have it. So I thought, you know what? Uh, let me get an iPad. At least I'll be able to, you know, watch videos or whatever on the plane. So that's what I did. So this is my first attempt at a video using my iPad. And it's weird because the camera is up there. And if I look at me, I'm looking down. So I have to look up at that little camera. So I'm sorry if I'm gonna be looking down a little bit. I'm not used to it, but anyway. I know it's been a long time um, since I made a video because you know, with my phone, it's a, it was a pain in the neck. I had no storage on my phone. I would try to make a video, it would cut out on me. It was just a real pain. So I kind of stopped doing them. But um, I felt like, you know, coming back on, um, I've been watching a lot of videos on YouTube of people doing um, thrift, of store hauls, Goodwill hauls, um, stuff like that. Um, they actually take the video, the camera, the video in with them and they do it while they're shopping. I don't feel comfortable doing that. I Usually when I go to Goodwill, it's very crowded and there's just way too many people. And I mean, it would be just, you know, I have to concentrate on just getting my cart through without running anybody over. I can't be holding my, my um, uh, iPad or whatever trying to film. So that's not going to happen. But I thought that, well, you know, at least I could show you on a general, average day, what I do pick up at Goodwill. Now, I went yesterday to um, two Goodwills and a thrift shop. Um, so I'm going to show you a few of the things I picked up. And, um, you know, I've also been watching on YouTube these people who do um, jewelry hauls. They um, go and they uh, buy, like, these big uh, jars of full of, like, costume jewelry or whatever from Goodwill. They don't know what's in there. They pay $30, $40 for it, and then they go online and they open it and they show you what they found. And I was like, wow, you know, and they resell. And I was like, you know what, that's interesting, but no. I can't even think of that. I'm not going to do that. I can't start something like that. Forget it. I have enough stuff as it is, but I find them very interesting. I find them very relaxing and, um, you know, I, when I, sometimes I feel anxiety, I get very anxious and, you know, I don't want to take meds for it. So what I find works for me is I go on YouTube and I watch these like opening videos and hauls and stuff and it calms me down. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to show you guys some of the stuff that, um, I got over the weekend. Now I know, uh, you all know, I like my, um, antiques and stuff. I've been posting sporadically different things that I find that really stand out. But it's not always, you know, wow, look what I found. Sometimes it's just, you know, average um, household stuff that, you know, you can use and you get it for a really good price. So that's kind of what I found um, this weekend. I did find a few things that are more old or vintage, but um, generally it's pretty much um, stuff that I can actually, you know, use. Now, um, the other little tidbit that I'm going to share with you is, um, you all know that my goal, if you hear noise, it's my cat, Cinnamon. She's, she's acting really crazy today. She's running all around, but anyway, um, I guess you all know, I had said, you know, my goal, um, is to, uh, you know, one day get my old house, probably in Pennsylvania. I mean, that's not carved in stone or anything, but you know, it is something I want to do. But the one thing that hubby and I have um, decided on, and we are definitely going to do when he retires in another four years or so, we are going to purchase a little house um, down in um, Cape May, a little beach house. Um, you know, not um, Victorian mansion or anything like that. Um, a little tiny beach house, probably in one of the um, resorts like Cape Shore or, or um, uh, what's the other one called? I can't think what it is called now. Grand Wood something. I don't know. But anyway, um, it's not going to be 55 plus though. Because, you know, I would, you know, hope to have visitors who are not going to be 55 plus. I don't know. But it's not. It's just going to be regular. But anyway, we have decided we are going to do that. And that is definite. 
So I'm like, so I figured like no matter where we move, we move to Pennsylvania. If we move down south, wherever we go, we'll always have a little place in um, Jersey we can come to for, you know, five, six months out of the year or whatever. Because the one we're looking at actually is open um, year round. I mean, well, it's open like I think six or seven months and then I think it's open long weekends during the winter. I don't know, but whatever. So that being said, um, I have always been obsessed with... Um, I love the beach I, and all that nautical whatever, but shells have always been my thing. If you know, I have my shop, um, Seashells and Roses, because that's one of the things I've always loved since I was a little girl, going to the beach, collecting shells, blah, blah, blah. So now I've been given pretty much carte blanche to like <laughs> buy all this nautical stuff that I find because I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to have this little house. I'm going to have to decorate it, whatever. So um, what I've been doing lately when I go to um, Goodwill, is finding if I find anything that I like that's you know nautical and I think wow I'm gonna put this in my beach house I've been buying it so um, it's getting dark in here because it's getting cloudy out so I hope you can still see me but anyway um, let me show you a few of the things I've gotten so far over the last few weeks that I think that are nautical and I really got them for a good price if any of you live down the shore or you like just decorating um, with that style, you know, I would recommend you head over to Goodwill, um, or a thrift shop because you're going to find some cute things. Now, uh, let's see. The one thing I actually just found yesterday is this little hat. Um, it's a straw hat and, um, it's got, uh, shells on it and some little, um, fake pearls here and there scattered around with a little hanger. And I thought this was so cute. I paid um, $2.99 for this, and I was like, oh, wow, all the shells are here. They, none of them look broken. I mean, you know, um, there's some glue, because like, it was hot glued, obviously, but I was like, this is so, so cute. So there I go, $2.99. Um, yesterday, I also found this at the Goodwill. This was, I believe, $3.99. It's a, a $2.99. There's the price right there. Um, it's a wooden sign. Now, it says Manasquan. Manasquan is a town in New Jersey, for all of you who are not from New Jersey. It's a beach town in New Jersey. I have never lived in Manasquan. I probably have driven through Manasquan. My husband knows of Manasquan because he grew up down the shore. But I just loved this sign. Don't ask me why. My husband says you like the curly cue. That's why. I'm like, well, maybe. But you know what? I says, I'm going to put this in house wherever I, you know, down the shore. It's one of the shore towns. And then I thought... If I ever come across any other shore towns, you know, because these wooden signs can be uh, pretty expensive. Um, this was made in, by Jones's Old Rustic Sign Company, and it's it smells like wood. It's wood. So I'm sure whoever bought this paid pretty good money for this, but um, I won't pay a lot of them. If I find them in Goodwill and they're shore towns, I'm going to collect them and they can go on a wall in a beach house. Um, what other thing I got? This I got last week. At Goodwill, it's a candle holder in a in a mason jar. You know, I love my mason jars, and it's got a little bit of sand in the bottom, and a starfish and a sand dollar. You know, it's got some cute. And you just kind of shake it around, and it changes the um, the bottom changes. You see, where there, there's different things, and on the front it has a little um, fake fan shell and some uh, some ribbon, some plain um, twine. I guess you call this twine ribbon on the top, and you would put your uh, votive right in here um i wouldn't use a real candle because i'm paranoid about fire now but i could get a little um of the fake one with the battery and put it in there and light it up and i thought that was really cute this i believe was um two or three dollars okay uh yesterday i found this one this is a little um nantucket home uh a little a candle holder again with a little starfish on it it's kind of got like a wicker look to it uh, blue and white, which is, you know, perfect for uh, the um, nautical theme. I like the blue and white. Some people like to go with the um, the uh, corals and the pinks. I really don't like that. I like the blue and white. This was 99 cents. And then last week I also found this little basket, this white um, wicker uh, basket. You know, it's pretty thick. I like the baskets that are thicker, thicker weave, not those real thin ones. The handle's very thick. This was a $1.99. There's the price tag. And I thought, well, you know what? That's perfect for a beach house. 
to keep, you know, in the bathroom. You can keep your stuff in there, you know, whatever you need, lotions, whatever. And I thought that was really handy. Um, I think that's pretty much all I've gotten so far from Goodwill for, um, for like the beach house. But, um, yeah, it's a start. You know, I can't go crazy because right now I don't have room, like I said. I have everything out in my garage and that's getting, um, crowded too. But I just thought I'd show you that. Now, yesterday also at, um, Goodwill, uh, as far as finding things that are, um, useful and not like, you know, vintage -y, um, Pyrex, um, if you, any of you are cooks, you know, you know how expensive Pyrex is. I'm trying to look at the camera. Um, and, um, you know, it could be, you know, uh, 10, 15, $20 to buy a K, uh, pie plate or a baking dish, you know? So for some reason they had a whole bunch of Pyrex yesterday. I was able to get, um, baking dish, nine and a half, uh, inch pie plates, Pyrex. They're marked Pyrex. This one is clear. Uh, this one, these two, um, this one was, uh, let me see, at $3.99 and actually was 50% off. So I got this Pyrex for $2. Here are two more. These are the same um, Pyrex, both 9.5 inch. These are kind of like the bluish tint. Here's the other one. Uh, these were uh, $4 a piece, which for Pyrex is a really good price. So I brought them home. Ran them through the dishwasher, heavy duty, very hot water, so they're clean. And I also was able to get uh, this one. This is the big, I have one of these. It's great for when you're making, you know, stuffed shells, um, uh, baked ziti sausage, anything like that. This is the big one. Um, I'm trying to see the measurement. I never know the measurements on these. I think this is 11 by 13, 11 by 14, oh, 13 by nine by two inch. So this is the uh, three quart, three liter Pyrex. I don't know. That's the measurements in the bomb. It has some scratches, but I mean, you know, that's fine. This two is $4, which is a good deal for Pyrex. They're usually very expensive. Even if you do find them in Goodwill, sometimes they're kind of like when I find those, the big Pyrex bowls that I collect. I mean, they want $10, $12 for them in like Goodwill. And I don't do that, but once in a while, you get lucky, and yesterday, I got lucky. So they all went through the dish dishwasher, like I said, for user people who are like, ooh, I can't use it, somebody else used it. I mean, you know, come on. If you eat out at a restaurant any time in your life, you know, you're eating off plates, you're eating off forks, you're eating off spoons, hundreds of people ate off of, they put it through the dishwasher, scalding hot water, you know, it's all good. You're not gonna catch any disease from your uh, used Pyrex anyway. Uh, that is something that is um, useful. And this also I found at a thrift store that I stopped at. I thought was so pretty. It's a trivet. I have do not have a whole lot of trivets. Now, if you're going to bake in that um, Pyrex I just showed you, that big uh, tray you make lasagna, big ziti, whatever. When you put that out on a table, you need like a big trivet. Look at the size of this trivet. Excuse me. Is this not gorgeous? It is like the raffia or whatever they call this um, that you get in your regular trivets. But someone took the time to actually needlepoint roses. Okay, this is needlepoint here. These are roses that are needlepoint. And they placed the um, needlepoint. You can see it's like hanging here where they, they didn't cut it off. Around three of those round trivets. And I was just like, is this gorgeous or what? I mean, really, you know, you also want to put a pan on it, but I mean, that's what it's for. So I'm going to use it, of course, but if this was $5, $5, beautiful, right? And handy, because like I said, when you put out a big Pyrex dish like that, you really, if you want to keep your table from getting uh, blisters, you really need to use that. The other thing I got at Goodwill that turned out to be a really good buy um, were these placemats. Now... You know me, I like uh, chickens and roosters. I have an obsession with chickens and roosters. And when I saw this, I was like, wow, look at these placemats. Now, personally, I've never had placemats that are corkboard uh, on the back. And these are cork corkboard on the back. There's four of them, they're all the same. They're in perfect condition. I mean, they've never been touched, they've never been used. Here's the back, here's the front. Little um, little chickens, roosters, whatever, going around the uh, edge and in the, in the center. Um, and there's a little signature here, and I wasn't sure what it says, 
Uh, I looked it up. I thought it said Jacqueline or Jacques or something. And I went online and I just Googled uh, corkboard uh, rooster placemats and it came up Jacques Pepin. Now, if any of you know Jacques Pepin, he is a French chef. I believe he's been on uh, Food Channel, Food Network. Um, I'm not really sure. I know I've seen him. I can't remember exactly where. But I didn't know he's also an artist. And he actually uh, designed these. He painted them and uh, he made the design. There are several years ago, I guess, there was a whole uh, line of Jacques Pepin uh, cookware uh, plates and whatever. And these were the uh, placemats that went along that um, uh, Sir Le Tom, I think, put them out. Um, a French company put them out. And um, I got four of these perfect. Then I looked them up, and they are selling. And right now, they're all sold out. I and mean, you can't you can't even really get them. They're selling for like fifty dollars for four placemats. I got them for four of them for five four ninety nine five dollars. So I was pretty excited about that. I'm not going to sell them because obviously, you know, I love my roosters and my chickens, so I'm going to keep them. But I was like, wow, I never even knew Jacques Pepin did that. And I was like, wow, okay, well, lucky me, goodbye. Okay, next. Now, same trip, that Goodwill, I got those placemats. I bent over and I looked on the bottom shelf. You know, a lot of times people don't bend that far, I guess, or whatever. Or they just didn't like them. And there was a bag, plastic bag full of another one of my favorite things, mason jars. Uh, I've been collecting mason jars, oh, let's see, when I had my house in Woodbridge, which was, we moved out of there in 2004, I moved in there in 1996, you know, 23, 24 years. Um, actually, when I lived in Woodbridge, my dad had built me a shelf for my kitchen up around that I had all my mason jars on. Uh, when we moved, we had, it was an older house, that house was built about 1920, and the walls were plaster. So whatever we put into the wall, we kind of left because we didn't want to be taking it out, having the plaster crumble, trying to, you know, sell a house. So I was like, you know what, we'll just leave it. I'm sorry, you know, because my dad passed away in 2002, so he can't make me more. So I regret that I didn't, you know, take them. But at the time, it just, you know, it wasn't a smart move. Um, but I did keep my mason jars, of course. But any chance I get... I pick up mason jars. Now, even in this kitchen here, I have mason jars that I've purchased since I moved into the apartment two years ago, and they're up along my um, kitchen, uh, top of the shelves. Maybe I'll, I'll take you in there and you can actually see them. Uh, but yesterday, I found some at Goodwill. Altogether, they wanted um, $4.99 for all of these mason jars. And these were all made about, in the ninth, I'm gonna say, uh, before 1940, 1920s, 1930. Um, you can see they have the metal closure on top. Um, this is an atlas. This is a ball jar. Um, another atlas one. Um, another ball. And uh, this one, ball ideal, patented July 14th, 1908. Okay, it's a little mismatched. It's got a clear lid, but it's got um, the aqua jar. And then this one with its original zinc lid. Um, that's the original old lids that they had. They're zinc, you see? It's kind of rusty and stuff. Um, ball Perfect Mason. Now, I've already paid, you know, 4 or $5 for one jar at, already at uh, flea markets and whatever, you know. Um, but this time I got a whole bag. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six Mason jars for $4.99. So that was a good deal for me yesterday, too. I was like, yes, okay. Uh, let's see what else did I find. Oh, yeah, that same Goodwill. You know, I always find a piece of um, early American pattern glass. Um, I'm trying to not buy a whole lot of it. But you know what? When I saw how beautiful the um, trim, the golding on this was still intact, I was like, you know what? That's really nice. I'm going to just get it. I think this was $2.99, something like that. Not expensive. So I did it. There's no uh, chips. There's no cracks. There's nothing. Um, I tried looking up this pattern last night. I couldn't find it. I really didn't take a whole lot of time, but I was like, you know what? Uh, this is um, a little vase. Now, some of you may say this looks like a sherbet, a dessert dish, and you're right. Uh, it could be an ice cream sundae dish, but not when this was made. This was made around 1900, 1905, 1910, probably something like that. 
Um, back then, people did not um, eat desserts like we eat them today. They would not have had this as a dessert dish, okay? Uh, back then, their dessert dishes were very, very small, little um, things like this. And um, I guess I usually they ate a lot of um, uh, fruit, uh, fruit desserts, you know, some kind of jellies or whatever, you know, something like that. They wouldn't have been having ice cream sundaes and anything like this at dinner at their table. Um, also, because it's got the scalloped edge, it's not a drinking glass, it's a, it's a vase. It's kind of cute. So I'm going to keep that. I might end up selling that one. Um, also, I collect spooners. This is a spooner that I found, again, at the Goodwill for like $1 or $2. It has a little bit of scuffing here, but I'm not selling this anyway. This is mine. Um, spooners, I think I've told you before, maybe not. Back in the day, um, I'd say before 1930, we're going to go back now to the 1800s, up until the 1930, 1940, um, Silverware, you know, your cutlery, uh, women did not have a lot of um, spoons, extra spoons, okay? So when they would serve dessert or anything that might need a spoon, they would place a spooner on the table and they would put a few spoons in here. If you needed a spoon, you would just take a spoon. Not every place setting around the table got a, a spoon. Of course, I guess if you're in a Victorian home in a formal setting, you might have had your own spoon. But in every day, you know, housewife um, setting dinner or whatever, she would have her spooner on the table, set a few spoons in there, and if you needed the spoon, you would take a spoon. That's how it worked, and they call these spooners. That's what this is. This is spooner, like I said. This is probably around 1890, 1900. I um, looked up the pattern, and I really couldn't find it. Again, I didn't devote a lot of time to it, but, you know, um, I'm going to say that's about how, when this was made. And we'll put that there. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything else. Oh, you all know I collect ironstone. Um, I've had very little luck lately finding any ironstone especially english ironstone i don't know what the deal is but anyway when the one goodwill yesterday i stumbled across this platter it's not english it's um stamped usa on the back and it's probably not very old i'm going to say maybe 20 30 years old but you know what it was pretty it had some little um edging around it here that you really can't see on there but i was like just as a filler you know, let me just get this. It was like, I think it was $1.99. So I was like, what the heck, you know, let me just get it. It's something ironstone anyway. It may not be great. And um, the other thing I got was this. And I was like, oh, this is cute for Christmas. And I love soft glazed um, stoneware. Um, I've never talked to you about stoneware before. I have quite a few stoneware pictures that are older and stuff. This one is from 1993. It's actually signed on the bottom, but I liked it, and it has Santa on it. And I thought, you know what, at the holidays, put this out with, you know, your spoons or your um, your cooking stuff on the on the uh, counter with, with Santa. And I thought that was really cute. And this was, I think, $2.99 or $3.99. So I was like, okay, sold. And I think that is about it for what I found yesterday. Um, so this is generally what I find, uh, you know, on my trips to Goodwill. Like I said, I posted a few weeks ago, I found that um, gravy boat with the underplate from like 1840 for, um, I forget how much I paid for that, 4 or $5. And I wasn't even real sure about it. It did have a mark on the bottom. I did think it might be old, but the condition of it was so pristine. I was like, I don't know. This must be like... Um, a Japanese forgery and you know you're gonna laugh but they do China China makes forgeries of ironstone um, ironstone they do put fake stamps on it to make it look like it's old English um, stuff because you know it's more valuable uh, it sells for a lot of money but then I looked at it and I'm like I don't know I'm like you know what for two three four four dollars whatever I'll take a chance like I told you, I bought it, I brought it home, I did a little research, and I was like, oh my god, this is like 1840, and I was like, I can't believe the condition of this gravy boat. I have it in a very safe place right now, I'm not even going to drag it out, because with my luck, I'll drop it, but, um, you know, that was a wonderful find on that day, 
um, it's not always like that. You're not always going to go out and find something that's 170 years old. I mean, you know, it's not going to happen. But you can find things like my mason jars that I love, you know. Even a little iron stone. It may not be as old as I want it to be. But, you know, it is iron stone and it is going to go in my collection. So, you know, you take it as it comes. When you get a big thing, you know, you can be real happy about it. But in general, I was happy. Like I said, I've got my place Jacques Pepin placemats, which was a good deal, according to what I'm seeing them sell for online, and a couple of beachy things. So all in all, a good a good um, trip to Goodwills yesterday. Um, well, I hope this is 25 minutes. Oh my God, I've never made a video that long because my phone wouldn't let me. So I'm gonna try to um, upload this to Facebook, hopefully, and maybe YouTube, and. Um, Okay, I'll be back with you guys again. Um, take care. Uh, love you and um, see you soon. Bye.